Everybody, what is going on? It is Crypto Bobby. Hope you're having a great day, great night, wherever you're watching in from. Today, I want to talk about the big old nothing burger from the closed door meeting with the SEC and the CFTC. Really, nothing came of that whatsoever, which I think is, is a positive thing. We'll talk about you know, what went down today. A lot of people freaking out um, and then getting mad about the story itself and a lot of other things. So we'll kind of clarify on that, clarifying the video from yesterday. Uh, also want to talk about the old man yelling at the cloud, the old man yelling at Bitcoin, or the two old men yelling at Bitcoin from good old Berkshire Hathaway. We got Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, neither of whom like Bitcoin whatsoever, uh, and them making some significant headlines with some pretty crazy, outrageous statements about Bitcoin. We'll talk about if that actually means anything. The CEO of Binance uh, talking about VCs, and then kind of an interesting sports story, but from a usability perspective, Steph Curry and the team at crypto kitties kind of partnering up for a new version of crypto kitties celebrity crypto kitties which is kind of cool kind of interesting and i think goes to show it's going to charity but i think could really go to show some cool use cases uh, on ethereum or any other decentralized applications in the future if not ethereum uh if you are watching this right now hit that thumbs up button hit that like button helps to really get the video out i would really appreciate that if not it's all good still love you but hopping into it today so the big kind of news yesterday and i made a video about it and some people liked it some people did not but uh the big news that was supposed to happen today was there was supposed to be a meeting between the sec and the cftc turns out that the, the majority of the meeting was really just a working group meeting uh shout out to the person in the comments who had mentioned that uh and clarified on that so shout out to the person in the comments from yesterday who had mentioned uh really just lived in DC and worked in the government and knew more of the specifics about what a working group meeting is not being a public meeting not being a live stream meeting or anything like that uh, but a lot of people on Twitter were really pissed about the Wall Street Journal because they wrote this article and they said hey this contributed to FUD this contributed to fear uncertainty and doubt uh, and people are even threatening class action lawsuits which I think was the most ridiculously stupid thing in the world just because there is an article or something like that it doesn't mean that you just get to sue everybody you want and cry like a baby every time you lose 50 bucks um everybody's on the decentralized everything kick you know we're, we're all about freedom and decentralization and then the second something goes wrong it's let's sue somebody which i think is stupid but getting back to that point so uh the author of the story paul vignu is actually a i think one of the better columnists at the wall street journal on crypto He's written an entire book about the history of cryptocurrency, and it's a pretty solid book as well. Um, so basically, he just said, no, this was nothing major. It was the working group. And then somebody said that, you know, you wrote an article that was two lines. You alluded to the SEC meeting today. Then that went to the Chinese, and then they caused a bunch of FUD. They're selling. And then, you know, how much did you make? And the guy's like, I literally didn't. I don't own any crypto. I don't invest crypto. I didn't make this FUD on purpose. Uh, and then people are saying, you know what, um, I think you need to be careful spreading FUD because this was inaccurate. But he said that basically there was nothing inaccurate about it. I, you know, we, we said that this was a working group and that's what it was. And uh, you know, people blew it out of proportion. Maybe there was a certain lack of, um, you know, on, on my end, clarity from, from that from yesterday's video. And if so, I apologize. I personally still, whether it was a working group or not, um, I still felt like that there could be potentially negative news or negative rumors that came out of it. So I moved a little bit of, of crypto back into USDT, back into Tether. Not my entire portfolio. I'm not a nut job, but I, I took a little bit off the table late last evening and then basically just broke even this afternoon. Crypto, the market went down a little bit, kind of trading into the morning. And then uh, it started picking back up after pe people realized it was just a working group and there was nothing that was going to come out of it. So I basically just bought back in pretty much where I exited. It was a non-event for me. Hopefully it was a non-event for you. Where we go in the future from this, I still do think that the Ethereum is a security, was a security, could be a security debate is going to be something that you're going to hear about in the future. I don't think that the U.S. government, I don't think that the SEC is going to come out and say it's a security, but something to keep in mind and just keep an eye on moving forward. Now, to maybe more funny news at this point in time, but we got Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, the two big dogs over at uh, the two big dogs over at Berkshire Hathaway, and I actually kind of like Warren Buffett. I read his biography. He is an absolute savage when it comes to work ethic. 
He was an absolute nut job when it came to investing, saving every penny that he's ever made, basically, and just rolling it back in, rolling it back in, rolling it back in. He's probably one of the best people in the history of the world that you could ever learn from in terms of basically starting from scratch and growing an insane, insane, insane amount of wealth. However, on the opposite side of the house, I think he probably has very limited knowledge and understanding of cryptocurrency and the value behind it and takes things at face value. And he gets asked about cryptocurrency all the time. And the reason he gets asked about cryptocurrency all the time now is because people know he's going to talk crap about it. And because the media knows, hey, if I ask Warren Buffett what he thinks about Bitcoin, he's going to tell me, I think it's crap. I don't think it could be valued. I don't think it's a real asset. I think you're going to lose your money. And then they can make a story about that. And then it's going to get a ton of clicks, a ton of views, and bingo, bango, there's your formula for a lot of money in media. So the same thing just happened. Warren, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, I believe, is having their annual investors or annual shareholder meeting in Omaha, which is a huge, massive deal. But basically, he had said uh, to CNBC on Monday that, or on really today, that uh, Bitcoin itself has created nothing. You're buying a non-productive productive asset. Uh, all you're counting on is the next person who's going to pay you more because they're even more excited about another person coming along. Somewhat true, not totally true though, uh, either. And this was, he had at one point in time compared it to rat poison, which is pretty, pretty hilarious. Said that it, it you know, in back in January, this is, like I said, this is something that's happened before. Warren Buff This isn't the first time Warren Buffett has come out and said, you know, I don't think Bitcoin is legit. He came out and said the same thing back in January when people asked him. But even funnier uh, is Charlie Munger, who is uh, also with Berkshire Hathaway. But he said that 94-year-old Charlie Munger then proceeded to compare cryptocurrency trading to dealing in freshly harvested baby brains, arguing that both would be immoral even if profitable. Suppose you could make a lot of money trading freshly harvested baby brains. Would you do it? To me, Bitcoin is almost as bad. So I don't know what Bitcoin miners are harvesting freshly harvested baby brains. I, I don't even know what a freshly harvested baby brain is, but I don't think uh, in AS I don't think a Bitmain ASIC miner has anything to do with that. I could be, you know, I'm not I'm not presently mining Bitcoin. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's a little bit uh, a little bit a little bit crazy. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe our, our 90 year old plus friend here has has kind of had better days behind him. But I just think that this was like one of the funniest quotes ever, like comparing Bitcoin, trading Bitcoin to baby brains. I <laughs> what what planet are we on? I don't know. But uh, apparently, you know, you can buy you can buy whatever company you want in the world. Uh, but, you know, if you, you know, if you mine or trade Bitcoin, you can you can buy, you can pillage, you can you, you can fire every single person in the company, flip that thing, uh, you know, jack the stock price up, do whatever you want to do. But the second you trade a Bitcoin, you know you're hurting people there. That's bad news. So stay away, folks. Stay away because baby brains depend on it. Baby brains depend on you. I think every time I make a trade from now on, I'm gonna measure it not in satoshis but in baby brains. So we'll see how that ends up panning out. And just going beyond that too, so this was something that came out recently and it was um, CZ, the CEO of Binance, who had made an entire post really about the venture capital world. And a lot of people took to it. A lot of people really liked it, really about the benefits of ICOs over VC, uh, traditional venture capital. I think there are certainly benefits to ICOs over venture capital uh, in terms of the ease of, you know, in terms of the ease of doing that, uh, in terms of community growth, there's a lot of potential benefits to running an ICO over venture, ca over venture capital right now. And I do think that the ICO world has clearly clearly taken uh, a huge chunk of investment dollars out of traditional VC space. However, I personally don't think that the VC space is going away at all. Um, I don't think it's going to be dead in five years or 10 years or anything like that. So I think there's a lot of regulatory things to shake out. And I also just think that just generally speaking, like obviously it's super advantageous for ICOs to continue to come, continue to come and for Binance to have them all trading on their platform because they're making money off trading fees. So it'd be crazy for them to come out and say, hey, ICOs are BS or anything like that. So I think that just looking at this, it was, I would definitely check out this article in terms of CZ's just 
background and thought process on token sales on initial coin offerings and things like that but as with everything take it with a grain of salt i think that the the idea that initial coin offerings token generation events are going to kill venture capital and just wipe it off the face of the planet until the vcs stop getting the best deals out of all of the people in icos i think you you know you're <laughs> i don't think that's necessarily the truth at this point in time and then before we hop into just the price of bitcoin right now which i think is at uh, looking at an above 9400 so we'll check out that in a second here but i think this is pretty cool so uh golden state warriors superstar steph curry who you obviously know if you watch basketball if not one of the better basketball players in the nba so he is based in san francisco or golden state is basically san francisco's team and they are very tech inclined which is kind of cool i think they're all a lot of the players on golden state are actually you know, work in have some level of uh respect and involvement within the venture capital and, and cryptocurrency space as well and steph curry is auctioning off celebrity versions of crypto kitties so the crypto kitties team uh the actual maker it's axiom zen game studio uh is working with steph curry to create these steph curry branded celebrity crypto kitties that they're going to auction off and i think that's kind of cool i think that's a really interesting use for the technology and i think you know, the more things like this that happen the better the potential adoption is in the future and it doesn't just have to be ethereum obviously this is an ethereum based solution but the more people that are using utilizing these decentralized applications the better and i think we really need to start seeing a pickup in the rate of adoption for decentralized applications and this could be something i'm not saying this is going to be the end all be all by any stretch but this is a step in the right direction this is a step in a positive direction for sure and i'm excited to see what might end up happening with this so this should be pretty cool to watch pan out now pop over here on coinigy uh, at this point in time but looking right now at the bitcoin charts and you know, like we said like i said earlier today i chilled out a little bit later last evening uh, moved into US dollar tether and then bought back in after uh, things seemed to be seemed to clarify with what happened with the SEC media SEC CFTC meeting or the the lack thereof right now I'm looking for Bitcoin to break through $9,400 see if that might kind of get us back to get us back above or fighting to that $10,000 mark I think really the psychological level of $10,000 is what i'd like to watch medium term but really short term right now we're pressing up as i'm recording this video at 9400 once we break through there i think we might have another shot at ten thousand dollars we'll have to see how that pans out but i think where we're at right now i i'm feeling pretty positive in the you know in the short term and i think that just the the overall momentum is is pretty bullish so i'm interested to see where this pans out but i took all the usdt the tether that i had that I kind of had in reserves in case it was a dip to buy. It's all back in. I'm ready to roll. I'm on the table. So we'll see how this ends up panning out. Outside of that, guys, I hope you enjoyed tonight's video. We'll definitely be back tomorrow. Also on Thursday, I will be speaking at, I'll be moderating an event. Um, I think there's still a few tickets left, but I'll pull this up here. So this is Fluidity Summit, uh, fluiditysummit.io is the name of it so it's out in brooklyn if you're in new york by any chance if not i believe there is going to be a live stream there i'm not not 100 positive but if there is a live stream i will definitely get that out not 100 positive on that now but there are some pretty awesome speakers for the event uh mike novogratz who i'm sure a lot of you know is a massive investor in cryptocurrency joe lubin the co-founder of ethereum um and kind of across the board ryan selkis bill ty erica carp uh, and then I'll be moderating a panel with Don, the co-founder of AirSwap, as well as uh, Paradex, Ledger, Gnosis, and IDEX. So some interesting decentralized platforms there, uh, as well as Ledger, which is, I think, going to be a pretty fun conversation talking about where we're at in terms of where we're at in terms of building infrastructure and where we'll be in the future so it should be a fun conversation we'll hopefully have that published out to you guys at some point in time if you can't make it in person thank you again for your time in today's video hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button the notify bell if you are not subscribed yet crypto bobby signing out have a good one peace